Now, this actually gets worse and literally this blew my mind when I discovered this. That isn't what reading is supposed to be like, right? Are we really gonna add multiple paywalls just so the reader can experience a full story? Okay, I usually don't do rant videos on this channel because I usually I want to try to be positive and I want to encourage people to read books and discover new books and but sometimes every once in a while you will see something that just needs to be called out because I just think that this is a 100% wrong practice and and it needs to be called out because I don't think it's gonna benefit anyone. And the fact that this has been ongoing for more than a year and almost no one seems to talk about it, I just find it absolutely baffling. And I just want to emphasize once again that it is the practice I am criticizing and I do mention authors names in this video but really I do not want anyone here to go out and write hateful comments to any of these authors because I'm not even 100% sure if they do have a say in, in whether they want this to be a, a practice or not. I basically made this rant because I really feel like if this practice becomes mainstream then it will hurt readers and it will not be a good thing for the book community so it's supposed to be more of a discussion and not a video to justify it attacking anyone, so please just be respectful. So the other day I was on my Instagram and I was looking through my stories and I saw that Patrick Leo had posted about this new Sarah J Mass book and I'll just say it upfront. I am not a huge fan of Sarah J Maas. I mean, I haven't read any of her works. So I don't know if they're bad or good, and that is not the point of this, this discussion. But obviously, Sarah J Maas, one of the biggest name in YA fantasy by far. She has millions of readers. She is super, super wealthy, and she's doing super well. And whenever a fantasy author is doing well, I also rejoice because I am a huge fantasy nut. But there was something about this announcement that stood out to me, and it was because of Patrick Lee, you highlighted it. This new upcoming book, which does have a gorgeous cover, is receiving a bonus chapter oh no sorry it's not one bonus chapter it is five additional bonus chapters that are all spread across five different books and to me this just seemed absolutely insane now i want to say a couple of things about special editions before i continue now i think special editions are wonderful i mean i own so many of them i love special editions and they are also a wonderful way to support authors for example probably my favorite firm when it comes to special editions the broken binding recently made the tight child trilogy and for an author like rj barker to receive a special edition of his books is amazing because all three books are reprinted and there are I think around 2,000 copies printed for each edition. So literally RJ Barker, he receives sales from 6,000 books of hardback special editions and that is a huge monetary boost for him. It allows him to spend more time in writing and it also gives us readers something special because these books have beautiful spread edges. And for us that appreciate stuff like this, it's great. And for the authors, it's great. So it's not that I'm anti special editions, I think they are wonderful. But the good thing about special editions like these is that it does have spread edges. It does have unique end papers, it does have art on the naked hardback and so on, but the story is exactly the same as a copy from the library or a paperback edition or the audiobook or the Kindle edition. You want to pay a bit extra for spread edges? You can, but it doesn't change the story and that's absolutely fine. However, Sarah J Maas and Bloomsbury Books, which is the publishers, are fundamentally challenging and changing how we perceive special editions and I think that this is a trend that we need to be very careful of and at this point in time, I think it's something that needs to be called out and hopefully stop. Now, as I mentioned, Sarah J Mass's new book is receiving five additional bonus chapters that are scattered across five different books and I don't know why but it just feels so wrong and immoral to do the stuff like that. Now I know that these are so-called bonus chapters and they're not supposed to impact the story in any meaningful way but for some reason it feels like Sarah J Mass's or I don't know if it's her fault it, it might not be it might be the publisher I don't know but it feels a way to misuse and almost I don't want to say abuse but like misuse readers loyalty to you because the way these chapters are structured is that you you are going to receive some special insights to various different characters in this world depending on what edition you have. So, so for example, do you love Bryce and Nesta? I mean, I have no idea who that is, but do you want to spend some more time with them? Well, then you have to buy the Walmart edition. Oh, you also love Ember and Randall. Why don't you just go out and buy Books and Millions edition as well? Just so you can get some extra insights into these characters and spend a bit more time with them. Oh, you want to read all five bonus chapters? Well, you have to buy the same book five times 
if you want to get all the bonus chapters. How much is that? I don't know, $100? You have to spend $100 on the same book to get the full experience of the story. You have to buy the same book five times. Guys, am I the only one that thinks that this sounds crazy and insane? Now, I know some of you might say, well, this is just bonus material. It doesn't affect the story. You don't have to read it and so on. Okay, that might be true. But let's think about this. Now, I know DVDs aren't popular anymore, but let's think about the Lord of the Rings DVDs. Now, we all know there's a standard edition and then there's a special extended edition and I know technically you can only watch the standard edition. I mean, you can't really, but you can if you want to, and you don't have to watch all the extra material, or at least according to the producers. Now, imagine this. What if the film studio, instead of releasing one special edition with all the extra materials, they said, well, we have a bunch of extra material, but instead of releasing one DVD with all the material, we will release five special editions with extra material, and we will put some of these deleted scenes across five different special editions. So basically, if you want to watch the full Lord of the Rings edition, then you have to buy the same movie five times. I think that most of you would say that is absolutely insane. Buying the same movie five times to get to experience all the additional material is insanity. Now tell me, how is this any different from what is happening with Sarah Jason's Masters books? The publisher or whoever, I don't know who is in charge, are in intentionally selling the same book five times and adding a bit of extra material just to get you loyal readers to spend an unnecessary amount of money on the same book and I just think it is so ridiculous. Now when I saw this I was truly shocked but then I made some digging and I discovered that this isn't a new trend. It has been around for around a year and some of these things I found were just it blew my mind. Now, if you are a Sarah J Maas fan, then you already know that this isn't a new practice and she has done this for some of her other books. For example, A Court of Silver and Flames had two additional bonus chapters. And for you guys to say you don't have to read these bonus chapters, I found a couple of comments online where, for example, one person said, you must read the A set. I don't know who that is. Bonus chapter. The bonus chapters are supposed to be just for fun, but this chapter, or at least appears to be very important for the plot of the next book in the series. Now, when people read stuff like this, don't you think that they feel like they need to go and buy the special edition? Because if this bonus chapter is that important, they will have to spend this money because if you're that deep into a series, you're not gonna care if you spend 15 or $20 because you just wanna read the book nonetheless. And then I discovered that there are whole threats on Reddit where people are discussing these bonus chapters and implication of them and how they found them and so on. And if you didn't have the money to buy these, then you will probably be feel very left out because you didn't have the money to buy two or three special editions. And then obviously my first thought when I heard about these so-called bonus chapters was like, obviously these chapters are probably like two or three or four pages, but oh no, no, no. <laughs> I was so wrong. I went online and I found a list over how long some of these chapters were. And for example, a chapter called Wings and Embers, which is a deleted scene, is 16 pages extra. And then we have a, a Face Sand bonus chapter, which is nine pages. And then we have this a set bonus chapter which is 11 pages long and many people online claim that this is almost a must read for massive fans of Sarah J Maas. But it gets worse. Then I found a master list over all the bonus chapters and I was literally shocked. This is not a new practice. According to this list, which I haven't verified because I haven't read any of her books, but according to this list, then Throne of Glass had six additional bonus chapters, A Court of Thorns and Roses had three, and Crescent City had three additional bonus chapters. Then if this list is correct, then there are 12 written bonus chapters out there already. And if we say each chapter is around maybe 10 pages long, then it means that Sarah J Maas has written 120 additional pages and scattered this additional material across various editions just to get you guys to buy more books or I don't know if it's her fault or whoever is in charge here. Now, obviously, I don't know if Sarah J Maas has a say in this or not. I mean, I'm guessing she does, but for this new release, she has written five additional bonus chapters. And if we say that every chapter is around 10 pages, then that means that she has literally written not two or three additional pages. She has written 
50 additional pages and scattered it across five different books to encourage you guys to spend more than maybe, I don't know, $100 on buying the same book twi five times. This just feels so wrong to me on so many levels because it's almost like misusing readers' loyalty and squeezing as much money as you can out of them because you know they will want to read all of that bonus material. And I found it hilarious because when I was looking at this post, one of the top comments said, we need a short story collection of all the bonus scenes one day. And I was like, bro, this is just so messed up. But I posted a tiny rant on my Instagram page about this and I asked you guys if you thought this was a good practice and around 90% of you said no, you hated this trend. And then some of you notified that this wasn't even only a Sarah J Mass practice. No, this actually gets worse and literally this blew my mind when I discovered this. Thanks to my Instagram followers, I was for example notified that the book eaters by Sunny Dean didn't have an epilogue unless if you bought the Waterstone Special Editions. That is correct, you would only get the epilogue of that book if you bought the Special Edition. <laughs> Guys, is this what we're doing now? We're gonna have to pay extra to read an epilogue? I mean, come on. Now, to be fair, I do believe that Sunny Dean didn't have a say in this because I did do, do some digging because she did say on her website that going forward, they would be more conscious of the reader's experience and expectations and so on. So truly, I don't think that Sunny Dean had a say in this, so don't go after or anything. But just the fact that a special edition had an exclusive, not like bonus material, it had an exclusive epilogue. It's just like, that makes no sense to me. But truly, one of the worst examples of this trend is, again, a follower of mine notified me of this, but Stephanie Garber, she released a book, I think last year, which was called, Every Story Has the Potential for Infinite Endings. And the crazy thing is that this book has different endings depending on what special edition you bought. Now, to be fair, Stephanie Garber, she tried to justify this by claiming, well, this is a fairy tale and I like this ending the most and fairy tales have different endings and so on and so on. But really, come on, if you love this book and you want to experience all the different endings, then you simply go have to go out and buy the special edition of the Barnes & Noble edition, the Waterstones edition, and the Owl Crate edition, and probably also the Sander. So you have to buy the same book four times just to experience the different endings. Literally, just when I say it out loud how stupid that sounds, it just it just blows my mind that a lot more people have been complaining about this. I mean, I just hate this practice. I, I mean, I just hate it, and I'm not even sure if I'm able to fully express into words why I feel so triggered about this. I think as a bookworm, the, the beauty of stories is that no matter if you borrow the book from the library or if you bought the audiobook or the ebook or the paperback or the hardback or the special edition, we would all get the same story and no matter which edition you had, you could get the, the same experience of the story as the one that spent much more money on a special edition. And buying these different editions of books was never a requirement to experience the full package but here it feels like fundamentally I don't know who it is if it's, if it's the authors or the publishers or whoever are trying to almost make it required for you to go out and spend that $30 or $40 just so you can experience the full package and it just feels wrong I mean that isn't what reading is supposed to be like right are we really gonna add multiple paywalls just so the reader can experience the full story I know that most authors would agree with me here but most authors, they just want to write beautiful stories and get other people to read them and enjoy them and we can discuss them. And everyone that has read the book can be part of the community because we have all read the same thing. And for many authors, having loyal readers is like a dream and something that is so hard to build up. And that is why I feel that it's, it's so wrong for authors that do have loyal readers to not give them extra stuff for free, but instead write extra stuff and add it to multiple different books just to earn more money. I don't know, it just feels immoral. It's one thing that if all of these bonus chapters were maybe on Sarah J Mass's website and you can buy each chapter for, I don't know, one dollar each, but this practice here means that she's added these bonus chapters to different editions. So if you want to read these additional 10 pages, you simply cannot buy them. You have to go out and buy a whole book for, I don't know, $20, which basically means that if anyone wants to read this bonus material with a good conscience, then they have to go out and buy the same book five times or they have to read it illegally, which is not something I condone. It's either pay $100 for the full experience 
or do it illegally. And what about people that don't even have access to Walmart? I mean, I live in the UK, we don't have Walmart. How am I gonna be able to get access to these chapters? So yes, I mean, special editions, they are great. I mean, I fully support authors getting special editions because it's a great way to support them, but this is just taking it too far. I don't approve of this practice, and I seriously hope that this does not become a mainstream thing in adult fantasy. Because if Sanderson next year announces that Stormlight Archive 5 will have five or ten different special editions and if you want a bonus chapter with Kaladin then you have to buy the Waterstone edition and if you want a bonus scene with Dalinar then you have to buy this edition or whatever, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm a massive fan. I want to experience a full package. So again, I really, really hope that this doesn't become mainstream in fantasy because while I think it's so incredibly important to support authors, I also think that it's important that readers do find it very accessible to get into your work and experience everything you've written. So yeah, what do you guys think about this topic? Am I being a bit too emotional? Am I overthinking this? Or do you also think that this is seriously messed up? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I do apologize for being a bit negative here i do promise that next video will be more positive thank you so much for watching hey guys thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end i hope you enjoyed this video and got some inspiration to read more books now if you want to support me in any way then you can check out my patreon i have different tiers and you will get different benefits depending on what tier you support some of the benefits include getting your name in my videos voting rights on my next feed getting a special role on my discord server getting access to one patreon exclusive video a month or even art cards and bookmarks signed by my wife and me most of the money goes to hiring an editor to do a couple of videos for me a month which basically allows me to post high quality content more frequently but yeah thank you so much for watching and god bless